He is the former UFC bantamweight champion and Ohio legend and a guy we cannot wait to see fight again in 2021. Welcome back with me right now, Cody Garbrandt. Cody, what's going on? How are you? What's happening? I'm doing well, man. I'm, uh, it's been a while since we spoke, but glad well, we got this virtual media day going. And uh, <laughs> what, what else is the best to finish with, uh, with you? You know, saving the best for last. Um, so yeah, man, I'm excited. It's going to be a great year. Um, a lot of crazy stuff's happened think, across the world the last year, but you know, very excited to get back to you know being inside the octagon and uh, speaking with you about what's you know what's to come. Absolutely, it's funny. Before we spoke, a couple I'm sure you saw it like a couple weeks ago was the anniversary of your title fight win over Dominic Cruz. And I posted some photos on Instagram because I was with you in your final days of training in Vegas, and I was like, "Man, it's crazy to think how time flies with something like that." Like that anniversary just passed, and uh, here you are back, obviously, uh, you know, in, in the top of the bantamweight division, but also obviously thinking about flyweight. So, how first off, before we get to anything else, let me just ask how you're feeling. I know you had to deal with COVID nineteen. You had some, you know issues with that obviously it took a toll so how are you feeling right now yeah finally man it's been about a month and a half that i've kind of felt um i would say 100 percent no symptoms um feeling great that the stress that i'm putting on my body with the mma and all the training that i've been doing um my body is retaining it really well or you know holding really well to the stress that i've been putting on it so um you know i'm, I'm excited I'm, I'm targeting a fight uh, with Jose Aldo in April, that's what I'm, I'm shooting for. I have the title fight um, at 125. I'm the next in line, but obviously they have to do the rematch, and I'm not going to sit and wait eight months. That's uh, not something I want to do. So I feel like staying at 135 and fighting Jose Aldo uh, will be a great matchup. I think mean, that's a it's a good fight. A lot of fans can get behind. Um, I'm just at a different place in my life, a career. I feel like the last few years I've matured a lot. Um, as a fighter, as 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 a man, um, obviously there's a lot of things that you still deal deal with, you know, um, you know, to keep growing, you have to every year you have to keep leveling up. But I feel like um, my best performances are above me and are in front of me. And um, you know, why not challenge yourself with the Jose Auto? You know, what I mean, he's still dangerous. He's still there. Um, he's down at the weight class now, so um, he's coming off a win. I'm coming off a win. You know, he's he's in the top five. Um, you know, we're both in the top five. Um, so I think it's a perfect fight to make. I want to sit eight months and, you know, hang on to that title shot. I want to get in there and, you know, sharpen my skills inside of a fight camp, go in there and battle test myself with one of the arguably the best featherweights, one of the best featherweight fighters to, to fight in the UFC. Uh, I think this is a fight that's uh, – appeals to me that gets me motivated it gets me focused gets me driven gets me out of bed you know gets me off the couch when i want to do some extra extra work so i think that's a, that's a good fight that i'm uh i'm campaigning for i spoke to dana i spoke to sean i spoke to ali they're all for it um you know so hopefully that we can get this you know at least the contract signed to where we can project a date you know in april and i can start planning out my you know, fight camp, whether it's, you know, if I'm going to 25, then I got to cut some little bit of weight. If I'm going to stay at 35, then I got to stay, stay where I'm at and maybe, you know, do a little, you know, train differently as, so I need to know I'm kind of in that. I always give myself about a month to five weeks of getting myself primed to go into camp. And then I give myself another. So really I'm in probably fight camp about, you know, like training, you know, pretty regularly heavy load for about 14 weeks because there's always going to be something that's pops up there's always going to be you know injury or um media days or who knows what happens Your kids being sick that you know just just life that you might have to you know you know take a few days to you know to reassess and, and whatever happens at the fight camp so um it's it's a kind of at that line to where like i need to to figure out what's going on you know let's 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 get these fights inked up you know we're already into Atlanta fights in March so why don't we start getting one in April I feel like that gives me enough time to you know build back up from you know COVID I fought COVID for months you know for months and months on end with just one thing after another after another and then this would pop up and I would heal the vertigo the vertigo was the longest acting thing that I have that I tore the vein out of my uh, tore the vein off my muscle and my arm um, so I tore, tore the vein in my in my right arm and didn't know and ended up waiting, got the MRI and then 
got the ultrasound and I had three blood clots. So I've been on blood thinners and just kind of battling back through that and doing what I can. But I feel great, man. I feel sharper than ever, faster than ever. Conditioning is on a whole nother level. Uh, and just mentally, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to dive inside of a, a fight camp and, and just get in there and, and get back in the octagon. So April, Jose Auto. Absolutely. Go. I love that matchup. I love that matchup. Before I get to, to Jose Aldo, let me ask you, coming out of the, the COVID stuff, because you had to deal with so much, I talked to Gilbert Burns after he had it, and he said, you know, it took him a good month, you know, to start to feel, you know, once he felt healthy, to really, you know, get back into a camp and start to get his cardio back and, and really start to feel normal again. He was actually kind of shocked at, like, how hard it hit him. Obviously, you were dealing with a, a few different symptoms, but now that you're back in training, like, how are you feeling? Have you kind of gotten your body your body back to normal? Yeah, I feel like it's it's better than it's been. Um, it's taken a while, you know. It's taken since you know the beginning of August when I first, you know, uh, actually like yeah, because it was about you know, end of July, August. I started feeling not myself, and I just was like, <clears throat> I don't know. I just I got that fight analysis. I was you know training hard. It's kind of hard to not train hard when you get a you know big fight analysis. I'm fighting for the title. I'm going to 25. So I just thought I was just you know fatigue from training it was just much different it felt really really different man just my body felt different um yeah so it, it was a battle man but i feel so much better and, and the time that i had covid i was cycling because i had vertigo so i wasn't able to do mma a lot of the mma stuff like the, the grappling and stuff because i would get dizzy a lot like super dizzy so i was cycling a lot putting a lot of miles in and doing that aerobic system which i never have problem with cardio um, I think a cardio is a, a, a mental state, you know, a fatigue. You can live in that fatigue state or you can push past the fatigue and catch your second, third, fourth win. Uh, for me, I think that's what it happens. But it allowed me to improve my aerobic system, which I had the anaerobic, you know, the quick twitch, fast twitch, you know, speed and power. But being able to have that gas tank to use that system uh, simultaneously through through a fight uh, so i'm excited to see it translate over uh, my skills are amazing sharp uh, my my mind my hunger uh, my obsession with with martial arts and growing as a martial artist um has really come you know tenfolds you know for me as uh, the last few years i just really was you know you look at them as i was losing but there are a lot of learning lessons for me and uh, i feel like it set me up for my next stage of my life, my next five years of my career. And I'm just ready to go go after it, go after it like I did when I climbed to the title. You know, it was um, just just focus. I think that's the one thing that I lacked was, was the focus. A lot of other additives, you know, were subjected into the equation, the reason why things probably didn't feel right or going into the fight. And a lot of it was on me, you know, majority of it was on me. And I think just, just being breaking down the simplest form when we're trying to look at this hindsight's 2020 is that the focus, you have to be focused and that's it. Cause everyone's fast. Everyone's good. It's the focus, it's the focus and the consistency. But it was for me, it's always, I'm always consistent. I always show up at the gym, work hard. It's just the focus. You know, yeah, be 100% in. Absolutely. So, just, yeah. so now, with that being said, you know, obviously we're going to get the flyweight title shot. I know it was disappointing you didn't get that, but correct me if I'm wrong, even when you were going to go for the flyweight title, you hadn't closed the door, obviously, of fighting at Bantamweight. So instead of waiting for, you know, Figueredo and Moreno to fight and then waiting another, like you said, eight months potentially to, to actually get a title fight, you're healthy and you're ready. Why not fight at 135? Is that kind of the idea right now? That's that's the idea. That's the idea. I'm not I'm not one to sit and wait. You know, 35 still my division. You know, I just we had a agreement with the UFC um, to go down to 125 pounds and really be able to simultaneously bounce back and forth, which I can do and easily will do um obviously covid got me and it got a lot of people um just some people has had different symptoms or it affected them differently for whatever reason it it really you know took control of my body and i think a lot of it was stemming back from the kidney infection in march and being on antibiotic um for five to six months and then getting back into a fight camp in the sun sal and not let my body and immune system to rebuild. And then I think that's why it really, really affected me. And I had the, some of the worst um, symptoms and long, long acting symptoms after, after um, getting exposed to COVID. 
So, yeah, I mean, just, yeah, I mean, 25, 35 is, is my division, but I'm not going to sit and wait, and I'm not going to cut to 25 for a contender shot when I already have the title shot. So go fight a legend, Jose Aldo, go get him in my cap, you know, um, knock him out, and just stay sharp and get ready for the winter um, of Figgy and Moreno in August or September, and then fight whoever wins out of Peter and Sterling and uh, towards the end of the year, maybe a December card. So that's my, that's my plan. man. I try to map out my year. That was my new year resolution. And that's kind of what I've kind of formulated in my mind as far as my next three or four fights. I love it. I love it. Now, with that being said, I don't think there's any, you know, I don't think we need to say much about the legend that is, you know, Jose Aldo. The guy has fought everybody. And I got to be honest, man, he's looked good at, at, at Bantamweight. I mean, I think a lot of people were kind of shocked. I, I was one of them. I said, man, there's no way that guy's going to make 135, much less fight at 135. And he's looked great. I mean, obviously had the you know, battle with Marlon Marias, you know, no shame in losing to that guy. It was a very close fight. Then he had Peter Yan. That was a battle back and forth. Beating a guy like Cheeto Vera, man, no, no slouch there. Cheeto Vera is a stud, and and he went out there and he looked great in that fight. Uh, what is it? I mean, what have you thought about Jose Aldo as a bantamweight? Because I don't think he's looked that much different, honestly. And I'll be honest again, I felt like he, I felt like the weight cut would kill him. Um, yeah, like I, Aldo's game, you know, what I mean, you don't get those accolades that he he's achieved and those accomplishments he achieved in this career if you're not you know, one of the best. And that's why I'm, I'm here to prove that I am the best, you know. Um, I I see him as an opponent, you know. It's business. Uh, I got a lot of respect for him, but I know I'm the far superior fighter skill-wise, speed, power, conditioning, and uh, that's what I test myself with. I know that I'll knock him out, um, and I'm really excited for that fight. You know, I think that it's a, it's a good fight for me. Um, what he brings, what I bring, uh, the fans will love it. Um, it's something for them to get excited for, and uh, I'm just excited to get. You know, it's, I need those fights, bro. I need those fights that get me up and and you know and scare me a little bit. But it's good to have those feelings back because there was time in my career that I didn't have those feelings and it felt didn't feel right. You know, I think you should be going to a fight. You should be scared, um, not for maybe the reason like scared what this opponent will do to you, but what you'll do to yourself to get the win. And that's what I'm scared of. Like, I know that I will put myself into deep waters to get this win. And I will train and push myself to the breaking point daily, weekly, monthly, however long this camp will be to get this win over Jose Otto. So that's what I'm scared about is what I'm going to do to myself to get this win. And um, hopefully what he will do to himself and prepare for, for this battle and, to see what he can do, you know. Um, this could be, you know, a, you know, win this fight too. You can fight for the title here and next at 35. See how the weight division shakes up. See how the flyweight division shakes up. So, um, for me, it's, it's it's a good, it's a risk versus reward. You know, it's a high risk, big reward, and that's what I'm all about. I wanna, I wanna have those fights that scare you. I wanna have those fights that get you motivated to to train hard and, and be focused from the start of camp to the end of the fight, you know, to the last bell sounds or to your hands raised. And, and that's what Jose Aldo does for me in the simplest form, no disrespect, no shit talking. Um, you know, I'll talk my fair shit because I truly believe I'm confident. I'll knock him out early, early, but I do want a five round fight just to see if he is battle tested enough to go five rounds. I can push the pace, um, and, and drowned him in there, but I know that I'll knock him out. And I, I've, I've seen it, visualized it, and so that's that's what I'm locked on. My eyes are uh, locked on Jose Auto, and, and very excited for that fight. Yeah, have you? I know you said obviously uh, you talked to the UFC. Obviously, your manager Ali Abdelaziz is one of the absolute best in the game. I'm sure he's working on your behalf. Have you heard anything from Aldo's camp? Have you heard their interest in the fight or anything from him? No. Yeah, I, I mean, kind of. We just. I've I've been you know just working in silence, uh, Damon, and you know my team's reached out to me to do this media day um, with, with a lot of you know with a lot of you guys, and it's been it's been nice, man. It's you know I'm not gonna lie, I missed miss a lot of the stuff that we we've done in the past, and just be able to good you know see where I'm at, speaking to you know you guys have such a good audience, um, 
to to get it out to the fans that I'm, that I'm healthy and I'm hungry and I'm, I'm excited for this year, motivated for this year. But um, you know, been working, been been in the gym, nothing's changed. You know, uh, New Year, same me. You know, I just uh, I just matured a lot over the last few years, and um, I'm just excited for w- w- what's to lie ahead. I have a lot of you know, lofty goals in, in, in this in this in this uh, in this career in, the, in this in this fight game. So um, Jose Otto's next, and I hope that the UFC will, will make this fight sooner than later, and we can kind of game plan, you know, start playing my trips to Jersey and splitting camp, go to Ohio, see, you know, see my uncle we'll train with him, you know. Yeah, and then do that. I'm excited to get in the fight camp. <laughs> is there, a, is there a, I, the way you're talking, and, and I know this because I spent a lot of time with you around this camp, uh, it, it feels a little bit like the Dominic Cruz fight, the focus, the the, the energy, and, and you know, for all the words you share with Dominic, I know you had a lot of respect for him because he, he was a legend. He was, you know, one of the greatest bantamweights of all time. Do you kind of get that same that same kind of feeling in your gut for a guy like Jose Aldo? I felt like it's been back. I feel like it's been back for me. Um, what do you want to call it? Mojo, ego, confidence. Uh, I, I think it boils down that the love is back. The love is back. The passion is back for, for fighting. There was a time, like I said, there was a time in my life that I didn't, I didn't enjoy. I didn't enjoy, it. enjoy it, man. I just don't know why. I don't know why that was. I lost the love for it, you know. And um, so that's good that I, it's back, and I'm excited for that. So. Uh, yeah, I, I feel, I just feel, you know, I need to be in camp. This is my purpose in life is to be a fighter um, when I'm in fight camp. And that's all I focus on, man. And I have a son, so I'm, I'm finding that balance of, of life and spending time with him and, you know, really fighting for more than just myself. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I was cool. I'm fighting for this time. I'm fighting for this. But now I'm fighting for my son to survive and to thrive and to give him things that, I didn't have or give them experiences or show him um, through hard work what you can obtain and that's why I have, have I have him at the gym and I teach him at a young age like you know we're working hard man we gotta work hard today you know um, came home today I had some scratches over my face He's like daddy you hurt daddy you hurt I said no I'm not hurt man so I was working hard at the gym he goes you win I said yeah so we won we got we got we went to the gym we worked hard we didn't get hurt that's a win Kai we're working hard <laughs> and so he goes to the gym, has fun. So I have a different than Natalia. I think I'm matured a lot in a lot of areas of my life. Still have a, still have a lot to correct. Um, in, in my life, you know, I, but I think that's what the Lord has blessed us with. Hopefully, is you know years to correct that and and mold yourself into the man that you want to be for, you know, my son to look up to. Um, there's a lot of things I had to fix and correct, but he helps me stay uh, focused in what I have to do. Absolutely. So now in a perfect world, and again, I wouldn't, you know, in any way, shape or form sound like I'm trying to look past Jose Aldo, because obviously you'd want to fight him with everything you got. And again, that guy's a legend. So you'd want to put yourself into that entire training camp, but everything goes well. You go out and fight Jose Aldo in April and then fight for the flyweight title next. Would that be the perfect, you know, 2021 for you? Yeah, that'd that'd be great. Or we'll see what with Peter Yan and Sterling, you know, if, I can go, you know, win this fight with Aldo. I can fight for the, the Bantamweight division uh, title. Um, it kind of falls in the place of how much damage they, they take in their fight and Moreno and um, Figgy take in their fight. But I think that win with Aldo, it's, it's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's a chess game. I got the title shot here. Okay, let's 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 staple it here. So you have different options in life because there's always thing. Look, I got COVID, and couldn't I lost out on a world title being a world champion. So I have to have different options. You know, that's, that's why I think Aldo is a great fight for me to stay at 35, and to to you know be him that I have the 35 pound title shot or the 25, whatever one comes first, I'll take. You know. And then fight from there and then go, go on one fight at a time. But yeah, I like to have kind of like, you know, options. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and like I said, it sounds like, you know, the goal is still the same two division champions. So whether it's bantamweight first or flyweight first, the goal the goal remains the same. Yes, yeah, going insane. Go around the belt, either, either either division, whatever comes first. Jose Otto will set me up into, you know, having options with a big win over him uh, to do so. So that's why I'm going after him. You know, no hard feelings, but 
gonna be it's gonna be a nice it's gonna be a nice win. I know that. Yeah, well, adding a guy like Jose Aldo to your resume. I mean, that's huge. The guy's a legend. And again, nothing but respect for him. I'm sure you don't have a bad word to say about the guy. You believe you'll knock him out. But that's a great fight. That's one of those fights where you really don't have to trash talk a guy, right? Like, that's just a fight people are going to tune in to watch because it's Cody Garbrandt against Jose Aldo. Like, that's all we need to say. Yeah. You know, he was, I was a bandweight division. He was a featherweight division uh, world champion at the time. And um, so, yeah, I mean, that's something you know they always wanted those super fights so now he's down in my division and it's you know talked about in the past and it's you know it can happen in 2021 20, april so fingers crossed that we get this fight signed sealed and delivered and we can go to work you know i love it now, i like the five-round fight i know you believe you'll finish him early but this is a main event yeah. i mean this has got to be a main event yeah it has to be a main event it's a main event you know um main event five rounds you know i'm, I'm a championship fighter absolutely and, Absolutely. Well, Cody, more than anything, man, I'm glad you're feeling better. I know, you know, obviously with everything you've had go on in the past, you know, several months, it's been kind of a crazy run for you, but obviously you're healthy, which is most important. The family's good. You're ready to fight and the sport's a better place when you're in it. So I'm glad you're back. And, uh, man, I hope, I hope this one gets signed because you got me excited even thinking about this fight. Yeah. Same here, man. I appreciate the kind words and, uh, you know, whatever happens, you know, we're, we're not in control. We can only control what we can control. If it's meant to be in April, uh, with Jose, that'd be great. If not, we got some other options. Um, I'm excited to get in there, uh, and showcase a lot of my hard work and skills, uh, this year and, and get some gold around my waist. Uh, that's the goals. Absolutely. Well, Cody, it's always a pleasure to catch up with you, my man. Glad to hear you're doing well. Cannot wait to see you back in action. And thank you for taking the time for me as always, you know, I appreciate it. You too, buddy. Good talking to you. Have a good one. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.